Um, today is uh, important for me in my spiritual journey. We're talking about something that is very near and dear to me, and that is spiritual healing. I want you to hear me say, all healing is spiritual. Will you say that with me? All healing is spiritual. When we were yesterday at our health and wellness event, there was a lot of healing going on, and it was some of it was business connections, some was, of it was gardening connections, but it was all spiritual and all moving us forward. I wanted to tell you about one in particular, or a couple of stories that really touched me from that event yesterday. One of them was we had Robin here with Libby's Legacy. You know, she's a member here, attended here many years, and Chris, who's sitting over here. Uh, so Robin had her booth over here with Libby's Legacy. Chris had her stand over there with Women Caring for Women, you know, which is, you know, Women Caring for Women. And um, anyway, women know what that means. Anyway, um, anyway, and so she was over there, and, and uh, anyway, there was an issue that she's had for six years with Libby's Legacy of needing help with getting scripts written. And Chris over here says, you know, we can do that easily. And that's, that's an answer to a prayer, and it happened right here on the lawn, simply because we made a space for healing. So will you say with me, I make a space for healing in my life. Together, I make a space for healing in my life. In other words, I am willing to heal. Right? Let's say that when I am willing to heal together, I am willing to heal. On, on some new level, I am willing to heal. I don't even know. Sometimes we don't know what the level is right away. But I'm going to give you some clues where you can figure it out today before you leave what the new, what the new area is that's asking for your attention. I'm going to tell you right now since I'm on the topic. If, if, if there's an issue that's been like, well, let's say, if I say it this way, it's been in your face. Do you know what I mean by that? What do I mean? Who can tell me in a word? Recurring on a regular basis. Well, could be chronic, yes. Could be chronic. But is there something recurring in your life on a regular basis? Is there a certain type of relationship difficulty that follows you? <laughs> or, or... Is there a physical issue you keep dealing with that you don't have to, but you're not really giving it your attention? What you're doing is pretending it's not there. So, in fact, the physical issue is actually owning you. That's many of us. A lot of us won't get care and get looked at because we're scared of what we're going to find, not realizing that when we don't get it looked at, we're making whatever the problem is actually worse by not getting it looked at. Amazing how we do that. And what might keep us from that might be another area of healing, which is our emotional, psychological work. So often people tell me, you know, I, every time I start to go forward on my journey, the same issue comes up. And I say, I know. I got it. And I might say at that moment, that's what I'm going to ask you to prayerfully consider to work with right now. So, but it doesn't have to be a, a spiritual or even a psychological issue. It might just be. A physical healing that's trying to manifest in you. Having said that, I want us to say together, all healing is spiritual. Together, all healing is spiritual. Yeah. I also want you to say with me, all he healing doesn't necessarily mean cure. Now, let's do it one more time. Healing doesn't necessarily mean cure. Say it with me. Healing doesn't necessarily mean cure. Many of us, when we've been given a diagnosis... The first thing we want to do is deny that it's even going on. And I can't blame you. I've done the very same thing myself. The very same thing. But what I found is when I do that, I'm fighting uh, in, in, like invisible demons. Instead of asking the question, is there something here for me to learn? God's will for me is good. God doesn't give me diseases. What does is the way we've polluted the environment. I just want to say that. Right? So it's not like God gives it to us. Okay, let's get that straight. It's not even like you caused it. Okay, it's a matter of human behaviors over time that have caused the conditions the way they are. People are getting cancer. So, how do we deal with that? Well, a friend many years ago said to me something very, very important. I couldn't believe it. Didn't understand it when she first said it. She said to me, cancer is my greatest teacher. I said, now, how can that be? 
I didn't under, I said, I know this is wise, but I don't know why. But I knew it was a good word. I knew it was a good word. When you, has that ever happened? It's like, ooh, that's good. I don't understand it, but that's good. That's good. So what I, and she was at, towards the end of her walk with cancer. It was um, stage four, I want to say. Stage four. And so I started getting to know her. I talked to her a little bit, knew her family. I knew her kids. Her daughter was about my age, and I was ministering at the church there. And as I got to know her, what I saw happen in her relationships is she called more love to her than she'd ever known in her whole life. There was also some family reconciliation and forgiveness. It was that condition that caused that, that helped that healing to happen. So there wasn't a cure of the cancer, but there was a healing in the soul. There is a healing in my soul. Will you say that with me? There is a healing in my soul. You know, that reminds me of a song um, I like to do sometimes. It goes like this. Uh, let's see. Do that with me. Ready? It goes like this. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Hey! Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. I say, whoa, you rock of my soul. Do it with me. Ready? Mother, Father, God. Ready? Mother, Father, God, there's a healing going on. Come on now, Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. Hey! Ma oh, you didn't do it, Mother, God. There's a healing going on. I said, whoa, you rock of my soul. Look at somebody. Do it one more time. Look at somebody. Ready? Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. Look at somebody else. Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. Hey, Mother, Father, God. There's a healing going on. I said, oh, you're rocking my soul. We got to end it like this. You go like this. My brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, my sister, my sister, my sister, my sister, my brother, my brother, my And then ease on out of it like that. That's good, right? <laughs> okay, well, that's enough of that. That's a new vibration in the room. Praise God. You know, um, I want to say a little, uh, another couple words. When, uh, when my son was about two, um, he and I, I was so proud of him because he would love to sit up and play on the piano and he would play with me, you know, and, and he was starting to sit up on his own and he was pretty independent, so I wanted to let him sit by me on the piano bitch at home. And we've got one of these really old, they're called upright grands. They're just weigh like a thousand pounds, you know, and it survived the Chicago fire, so I think that's real cool. Anyway, you know, it had a story, so I had to buy it, you know, other things. So we were sitting in there on the piano, and I'm playing, and I had my arm right around him, and all of a sudden, uh, I just moved my hand for a millisecond, and he flipped back off the piano bench onto a hardwood floor. My goodness, was instantly screaming and holding his arm like this. I thought, my God, it's broken. I'm the worst mom in the world. I was sitting right here, and I, I don't know how it happened. I mean, I was right there, I promise you. I just moved my hand for a millisecond, and I said, I'm not sure what to do. I, I needed a minute to think, and he was so upset. I said, let's just lie down together for a minute. Now, this may sound insane, but that was what I was, I was not wanting to make a move till I was sure it was right what to do. So I did what any good mom would do. I called my mother right away. So. <laughs> Actually, no, I didn't. But um, anyway, because she would have said, definitely don't take him to the doctor. But anyway, so what I, so what I did... I had him rest for a little bit. We took a little nap. I said, just rest, sweetie, and see if you can feel better. I thought, I just got to get my head on straight before I take him anywhere. I don't want to run him to an adult ER. You know, I've heard stories from kids, don't, DR, don't, you know, don't do that. So then I remembered there was a little place right around the street for me, a little, like, nightlife place, you know, that you could take little ones to. So I took him in there. 
And as soon as we got ready to go, it started pouring down rain, that Orlando rain that pours. And I, his arm was so bad and he was like this, I couldn't get his shirt on. So then I feel like a bad mom going outside in the rain. And then I, I walk into the pediatric place and everybody's saying, look at that bad mom. No kid, you know, no shirt on that kid. And he's like this. I mean, they're thinking I did it to him, I think, you know. So anyway, so I get in there and um, the guy says, I've got some bad news. I said, is it broken? He said, no, no, it's not broken. But the only way, he says, now come over here. The only way to get his arm back to normal is if I wrench it back into place. He's two years old, right? I'm like, the thing is barely even growing it. I mean, he's two years old and you're going to wrench it back into place. I said, well, you got to do what you got to do. I'll hold him, I guess. You're not going to do it without me here, so I'm going to hold on to him and you go ahead. So he tries one time and it doesn't work. He tries another time and it doesn't work. I said, that's it. Put him, I said, that's it. You're not trying one more time. I mean, I've had, I'm sorry. Doctor's office, you try twice and you miss it, that's it. Yeah, I mean, no, no multiple sticks or whatever. That's, forget that. You don't get it by number two. It's over with me and this doctor. So I said, no, that's it. That's it. I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. But So I said, listen, I just want to ask you something. You know, he's finally starting to calm down as I'm holding him. And he's Ooh, doing that little just sad boo-hoo that little kids do, you know. And I said to the doctor, is it possible his arm could go back on his own? And he said, well, I've never seen it happen. I said, just is it possible? He said, it is. It is possible. I've never seen it, but it's possible. I said, that's all I needed to know. So I said, sweetie, I don't know what we're going to do, but I think, and I, we were going home. I said, I think what we should do, uh, let's still go over to your Grammys. That's always going to be good for us. And let's go over there. And I said, I wonder if you could just talk to your body a little bit. Could you say to your body, uh, I want you to remember to go back into the right place. Remember where this bone goes. Talk to your body and say, you know what to do. Remind your body where that bone's supposed to be. Don't try to move it. Just remind it. And in my mind, I'm picturing the bone popping back into place, you know. So a little time, a couple hours goes by, and we're sitting there on the couch. And all of a sudden, I hear this. I say, what was that? He said, I think it was my arm. I said, I do too. This is amazing. I said, can you move it? And he goes, a little. I said, well, don't do too much now. Let's make sure. So I called the chiropractor, went over there the next day, and the chiropractor said, well, gosh, this is a relief. I said, is it okay? He said, it's back in place. He said, I'm going to help. I'm going to work with the muscles and everything around it. But yes, it's back in place. So it was the childlike faith that did it. I know it. I know it was the childlike faith that said, I believe it's possible. And, you know, doctor, yeah, it's possible. I think if he wouldn't have said with me, though, it's possible, I wouldn't have believed it. And if I wouldn't have believed it, he wouldn't have believed it. What if every doctor and every nurse knew all healing was spiritual? What if every therapist, what if every hotel worker, what if every, every foundation every organization knew all healing is spiritual you think his life wasn't better the moment that thing popped back into place more energy for everything there was more god showing up for us the word heal simply means or healing simply means to make whole so any area that you heal you are moving more into your wholeness isn't that good news so you know yesterday when we were at the health and wellness event i was playing volleyball with Alan Harris, who co-leads now the fitness team. You know, those teams are together. The, um, the uh, I'm sorry, wellness and fitness team are together. A few months ago, Alan was in the hospital with an invasive heart surgery. And here we were. And he was Every time he hit the ball, I would look at his biceps that were as big around as my thighs. And I said, my gosh, this is the guy that was in the hospital just a few weeks ago? What he's been doing is really working with his prayers, but he's also been working with his body. That's been an important part of his healing, taking charge of his body in a new way. What healing are you being called to? Knowing that every time you heal any part 
of your body, your mind, your soul, right? Anytime you do any healing, it affects every other area, that whole ripple effect, right? The beginning of my, uh, uh, I don't want to say taking off spiritual journey. I think that's what I said at last service. What I will say is the deepening of my spiritual practice happened when I was at a crisis in my physical health. And I was at a complete loss for what to do. So much so, every doctor I went to wanted to do surgery, and, and none of them really knew what was going on. And I finally said that to the last doctors. It was the fifth doctor in a row I had seen, and I had lost, you know, five pounds in the last five days. I couldn't eat anything without being sick. You know, it was really a tough time. And I finally said to the doctor, you really don't know, do you? And I, please tell me the truth. And she was a very sweet doctor. I mean, she wasn't a bad soul at all. She said, I really don't. I said, thank you for telling me the truth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit this now. Five times, five doctors, I got it. So I need, I need to try something new. So it opened me to a new idea, and I did something really crazy. I just opened the phone book and did a drop-the-finger test on a doctor. And I said, this is the one I'm going to next. And it was a different type of healing for me. It was a different type of healing, but was exactly what I needed at the time. After that, then I realized everything I was putting into my body was so uh, not good for it. Like, has anybody ever put something in your body that's not good for it? I mean, it's probably just me, you know. Okay, all right. Okay. You know, but I was doing it like on a regular basis, you know, like pretty much every meal, but didn't know it, but didn't know it. How many of us have put alcohol into our system even knowing it was bad and continued to do it? Because we were trying to covering up a pain, right? Or just deal with life. And we found that, you know, once we wake up from that stupor, life is still there and usually worse right after all that. It's the same with food, actually. No different. Just less of a hangover. But you can have sugar hangovers. But I didn't realize everything I was eating was really having a negative impact on my body. So as, after I started changing that, it was right after that that a friend said, you need to come to my church. And I was working at a church. I said, I work Sundays. She said, no, you know, I, wanna, I really want to get you to come to my church. Well, I said, well, I can't this Sunday. I'm a music director. I can't just leave. She said, I'm going to pay you to come as a musician. Will you come? I said, well, okay, I, for that reason, I, I'll manage to come, you know. Anyway, that was my first Unity experience at Seattle Unity. It was all during that same time. Now, is that an accident? I don't think so. It was because I began to heal, began to be willing to heal. And at that time, it was healing on my body. But that was the beginning of deeper soul healing for me. Starting to pray in a different way, starting to meditate, starting to deepen my therapeutic work. All that happened about the same time. So for me, I know for a fact, all healing is spiritual. Will you say that with me? All healing is spiritual. Now, I want to just tell you one more story that's important because I also said healing doesn't mean a cure. This is hard for many of us to uh, understand and accept, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about it. And I'll talk about it from a personal uh, standpoint so you know I, I've been through it. My, my uh, nephew, um, I had a nephew. He was five years younger than me. And um, so when he was five and I was ten, he was diagnosed with childhood leukemia. And I mean, I didn't even know what leukemia was. You know, at 10 years old, I, I'd never heard of it. But I noticed when anybody said the word, right? And it was, <laughs> when they said it, so I knew it was bad. But I didn't know what it meant. So at that time, we were very close. He was living in the same house as me with my older sister. You know, when you have so many kids, they just keep, you know, returning home. And so, so I had almost like a little brother. We shared a room. And anyway, he was diagnosed. And so about that time, do you guys remember all these TV preachers were real popular, late 60s, early 70s? Oral Roberts was one of them. Oh, yes, that healing ministry. And the bam, you know, and all that. Well, I decided, I decided I was going to heal my nephew. And it was really, I mean, I ordered that oil and everything. I mean, I did. I called the number and I got the oil and I was putting it on him. I was going to the doctor visit. I mean, you could not be more prayed for than that little boy was, I'm telling you. But he didn't heal. 
Well, he didn't cure. He actually healed. It wasn't what I was looking for. And it wasn't probably till I was in my 30s that I realized. In my 30s, I realized actually the healing that was supposed to happen happened. It wasn't the cure I was hoping for. So a healing happened for me because my spiritual life was all of a sudden about making a difference, right? His little soul was so ready to die, all the adults around him learned how to go easily, gracefully, and with dignity. So was he okay? His healing had already happened wasn't the healing I wanted. And then I realized, you know what? I'm not in charge of his soul. I'm only in charge of mine. I didn't understand it, though, till many, many years later. And then I remembered this scripture. I want to read it to you today. Especially I want to read it to us because as soon as we start getting uh, into spirituality, we think we know what everybody else needs to be doing. Amen? No, come on. Amen? We start judging everybody's process. Uh huh. They're angry, so they must be causing themselves to be sick, you know, and all that. Well, the scriptures are pretty clear, actually. Um, you know, someday I'd love to debate uh, a fundamentalist on TV. You know why? Because I'm just going to go right back to the Jesus words. It's so easy. It wouldn't even be hard. So let's look at Matthew 7. It's very very uh, simple. Matthew 7, starting with verse 1. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you seek the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? It doesn't say that emphasis is added. <clears throat> or how can you say to your neighbor, Let me take that speck out of your eye while the log is in your own eye, you hypocrite. I I think he said it like this, you hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. In other words, you take care of your own business first. Right? So how in the world can I see, how in the world can I help you see? I've got a whole log over here. I'm only seeing with one eye maybe, and I'm going to tell you what to do. It's a real freeing place to not have to take everyone's inventory. Trust me. It's so wonderful not to. And then when people come to you for support, you can actually be ready to give it, which is what they need in the first place. Nobody being judged by a friend is ever going to consider that person a friend for long. And, you know, we do it, not even aware we do it, but here's what I want to tell you about it. Is every time you want to go out here, and I used to have this Bible teacher school, and I love this man. My gosh, his name was Dan Lee, and he taught real slow, and he was from the country. And he'd say now, and he'd love to pray with me. And he would say, if I'm looking at you and I'm pointing my finger, I got at least three coming back at me. And that's a good lesson. That's a good lesson. So anytime you want to go out here, take the other three fingers and look right here. One, two, three. What's going on with my body, soul, and my spirit? What's going on with me that I'm looking out here? And I'm telling you what part of the reason it happens. It's not bad. Now, don't judge yourself for judging, okay? Okay, now, right? Don't judge yourself for judging. You're still in the same boat if you're doing that. You say, there's something in my psyche that wants to heal more than anything. It's showing me over and over what it is by looking out here, and I've totally missed it. It's going to keep showing it to me until I see it. It's a healthy part of you if you then do the work around what the judgment is. Is that making sense to you? That when we go out here and we see it, it's like a way for our own soul to say, look, look, look. See out here? Turn it right back in here. And then you know what's going to happen as you start doing your own work when you start seeing it out here rather than judgment. What you have is compassion. It's like, I've been there, man. Yeah, you spot it, you got it. You know, in 12-step meetings, that's what I love. You share, come on. 
In in 12-step meetings, what I love is you return to share your experience, strength, and hope, right? So that you can help somebody else, not so you can judge somebody else in their process. So wouldn't it be wonder, wonderful if churches were as open and accepting as 12-step meetings? That would be a good thing. So we want to take this idea of healing and really make it a part of our daily walk. So whatever's coming up in your life, And I want to say this. You don't have to go looking for it. It's already at your door. By the way, you don't even have to believe in God to want to heal spiritually. Just be open to heal. It's all God, whether you call it God or not. God doesn't even need you to call it God. That's how big God is. Right? God doesn't need your recognition to move in and through your life. It's already happening whether you acknowledge it or not. Right? So all healing is spiritual. So anything that's coming up for you on a regular basis, I'm going to ask you with me, as I'm doing with my life, to look at it. I'm looking carefully. I'm looking closely. I'm spending time and energy on those things. And I'm getting help and support when I need. I want you to remember, you do not have to do it alone. Here on Sunday, every Sunday, there's prayer chaplains. It's like they're going to walk with you a little bit of the way and say, God's got you. You're holy. You're good. Right? So I want you to remember to grab, to grab for that hand at times when you need. If you're feeling like you're in a relationship, you're being abused, reach out for help. If you, if you feel like you're the abuser, reach out for help. Even if you don't know, reach out for help. Get a hand. Get a hand to walk with you on the journey so that you can heal from your soul. Okay? So we're going to spend a few moments in prayer. And right after my prayer, I asked Arvo if he'd do my favorite one again, which is the red tail hawk that he plays on his violin so beautifully. So at the end of my prayer, I'm not going to say amen because I want it to extend into what Arvo's going to do, but I just want to put a prayer at the end of this message. Um, It feels like what I need to do. So please join me as we pray. Thank you, God, for the healing taking place in my life and in the life of each soul here. We are so grateful and we are so blessed to be in a place that acknowledges us where we are but calls us higher into a greater awareness of ourselves. Help us to move into more healing, willingly walking boldly forward rather than shrinking or denying it's there, but moving forward and then taking the hand of someone to walk with us if we need. Thank you, God, for those good friends, those prayer chaplains, for the staff here at Christ Church Unity, for all those people who are willing to walk with us on our journey, that journey of the evolving soul. So now we just become willing to heal on a deeper level, and we do so now through the music of Arvel Bird. <laughs> 